Over the past two and a bit years, I've more or less driven every single electric car on the market, from the BMW i4 to the i3 to the Volvo XC40 to the Porsche Taycan. But I'll let you guys in to a little secret. I am an enormous electric car skeptic. I love my fire-breathing V10s, V8s. I love internal combustion, the symphony of an engine. So for me, electric scares me a little bit and I've never spent more than a few hours with a car. I take the car out, I go and film it, I give it back. So I've never had to worry about the charging side of things, actually living with one. But that's about to change because behind me, over my shoulder, is the Volvo C40. And well, I've got that to live with for the next seven days. So that means I'm gonna have to work out how to charge it and basically how to live with an EV and learn this whole other side of motoring step by step. And of course, this is where you guys come in. I'm bringing you along for the journey. For all you EV skeptics out there, just like me, this could be the video for you. So let's start my seven days with an EV by taking a look at the EV in question. Now this is the Volvo C40. And well, I've already done a full look, walk and talk around the exterior and interior of a C40. And if you wanna see that video, please use the link in the top of the screen. But for now, let me give you a really quick whistle stop tour of the C40. So yes, this is the car I'm gonna be living with for the next seven days. It's the Volvo C40 finished in fusion red and well, it looks fantastic in my opinion. It's very recognizable as a Volvo, pretty much exactly the same as XC40 down the front. This car has got pretty much everything on it. So we've got the bigger 20 inch alloy wheels down here. And then the side profile is a little bit different. It's one of those coupe SUV-esque kind of looks. The back, I think, looks absolutely fantastic. You've got these lights here with a sort of sidewalk that goes all the way along here. And you've got this awesome rear boot spoiler as well. The back is actually really, really nice. So we've got, without getting into the too much of the technical specs, because I'll share those with you throughout the week, we can do around 250 miles on charge. Um, we've got around 400 horsepower. We've got twin motors, 0 to 62, I believe in about 4.7 seconds. So it is in its own right, a rather quick car um, but yeah I really do like the look of this and I'm actually looking forward to spending a bit of time with this car really get to learn it um, and discover what it's like super quickly show you the inside here um, and we'll brighten that up a little bit for you guys so you can see but yeah the interior very typical Volvo interior here um, got a lot of specs so we've got Harman Kardon sound system here. We've got no leather, so the pleather kind of material down here, and then Alcantara in the middle of the seats here. But it is recognizable as Volvo. It's pretty much Volvo inside. So it's something that, well, I've spent quite a bit of time with Volvos over the years, so it's instantly recognizable, really. Hello, welcome back to the C40 and day two of my time with it. Now today, I'm going to do something that normally I would be very anxious to do in an electric car because it's the summer here in the UK. I'm going to go and take this car for a little trip out to one of my favorite places to take photos in the UK called Bala Lake in the middle of mid Wales, northish Wales. Um, I haven't actually charged the car yet because I wanted to leave it and see how it would handle this. So the car's saying I've got 50% charge remaining and the range is showing 120 miles. Now, when I put the destination, Bala Lake, into the sat-nav, which in the C40 is Google powered and actually very, very good, it gives you a battery percentage when you get there and also a battery percentage for a return journey. So I was quite intrigued. So it's gonna, it says 29% battery remaining when we get there and 8% when I get back. Now, normally you'd think, yeah, 8%, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's, that's still some battery left. However, 
Filming cars, taking pictures of cars, involves a lot of getting in and getting out of the car, which means stopping, starting, and that typically drains battery quite quickly. So, I mean, I've got my phone, I've got everything ready just in case I run out of battery, but fingers crossed, I don't think the car will. I've got a GoPro just here stuck to the dash so I can show you my display in front of me as well and keep you updated on my battery percentage. But yeah, it's around 100 miles round trip. So theoretically, the range should be on around 20 miles when we get back. Theoretically, at least, anyway. <laughs> yes. This is gonna be quite interesting, but let's, let's skip over that for now. Let me tell you what my evening was like with the C40. Let me talk about this car. You've already seen a little quick walk and talk of this car, the exterior, interior. I personally love the way it looks, especially the rear end. It's fantastic with the drop away and the sculpture of the rear lights. I think it looks brilliant. And to drive, this car is fabulous. We've got 400 horsepower and twin motors, one on the rear, one on the front. So it goes so quickly. I actually, on the way in this morning, had a Volkswagen Golf GTI pull up alongside me and they obviously thought, ah, it's a Volvo SUV. And the look on their face when I stepped on the throttle and disappeared was absolutely fantastic. And that's one thing with electric cars, you just cannot really grasp how quick they can be. You take a passenger, my wife came in this car last night, she doesn't really like cars, but she came in this and I did this. And she was so shocked at how quick this car was because it doesn't look like it'd be quick. But it is. The way that the car is equipped as well is fantastic. The Harman Kardon sound system is great. I love the trim along the doors here. And it just feels really high quality. Love the seats as well with no leather actually. They're really, really nice. But anyway, the car in general, lovely to drive, lovely to look at, but this video is not about this car in particular, really. It's about what it's like to drive an EV and live with it. So, I'm gonna carry on hitting the roads. I'm gonna show you what the dashboard is saying right now. And then I'll catch up with you in probably, how long is it gonna take me to get there? An hour and 14 minutes. So I'll catch up with you in around 45 minutes when we get to some of the nicer roads, because well, they look amazing and I want to show you. So I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. So just like that, I'm around 20 minutes from the destination. And I wanted to just catch up with you because I found something quite interesting. With internal combustion engine cars, twisty A and B roads like this, where you're constantly on the accelerator, then on the brakes and so on, hurt the economy. But what I found in this, because obviously the C40, like many electric cars, has regenerative brakes, Oh, that's a bit of a bit of a blind corner. Um, because this car has regen brakes, the more you speed up and slow down, it seems to actually help with the range. Now it's not huge. However, when I first started this journey, it was saying that I was going to have 29 miles, 29% uh, of the battery left when we get there. It's now saying 30, and that actually on there was a little bit of a motorway, uh, probably about seven, eight, nine miles, something like that, on the motorway, that actually dipped down to as low as 27. But now, on these twisty Welsh B roads, that's gone back up again, and now it's on 30% battery when we get to the destination, which, which is quite fascinating, actually, that it's actually the opposite to internal combustion. But something that also is quite interesting, you do find yourself driving slightly different, and it's something that I've noticed. I tend to look at the range and the different readouts a lot more than I would if I was in an internal combustion engine car. Whether it's just the thought, whether it's just that in the back of your head that makes you think, oh, 
backwards. I've got electric. I don't know. Because really, it's no different theoretically, is it? I've got 30% when I get there. And then it's going to be, I think it's roughly 20% I've used getting there. It was 50 when I left, 30 when I get there, so 20%. So when I get back, I should have 10% left. Then if you're an internal combustion engine car, that would be no problem. You wouldn't even think twice about it. But for some reason in your head with an electric car, maybe it's just me, you just find yourself looking at it and getting range anxiety. I understand it. However, it's something that I think you have to try and get over because realistically, you don't need to have range anxiety. There's no need because, well, I'm going to get back if the car is to be believed, which I'm sure it is, with 10% battery, which is plenty. But it is going to be interesting when we get back because I'm going to have to charge this car and that might be the interesting bit. I know that there are several apps and so on that we can look at, but we'll come to that on the way back to charge the car. So we've made it to Lake Bala. And well, I've made quite a misjudgment here. I've never been here during school summer holidays in the UK. Well, normally you can get the car down by the lake a bit further around there, um, but I've had to settle for here. You can see the lake uh, just through there. It is unbelievably busy here today. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's just, there are people everywhere. You can't get near the lake. There's loads of people in the lake. I've genuinely never seen it like this, but anyway, that's my own fault for coming here during peak school holiday time. Anyway, we've made it. Let me just jump into the car to show you the damage on the battery. When I say damage, I should explain, I actually mean how much charge <laughs> the car has used. Um, see there we have 30% battery left and we've done, uh, I think it's around 50 miles. So let's jump into the system here. See how much we've got left, range assistant. Okay, so we have 70 miles left on the range uh, and let's drop into the nav the drive back and see what it's going to say. Oh, I panic then. Did you see that on that screen? <laughs> it said 11% on arrival but it also said on return 0% and I saw the red battery and started to panic massively there. Um, Cause well, that would have been rather interesting to, well, I suppose it's just saying what it'd be back to here, but I saw that and panicked. I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna get back. See, and that, that's the only thing that you need to get out of your head is you see that and you start to panic. 11% when we get back is actually very, very good, but, Inevitably, I'm going to need to find a charger when we get back to the destination. So I'm going to try and find somewhere to have a bite to eat. Probably not going to happen because, well, as I've explained, it's disgustingly busy here at the minute. But let's get back on the road and let's get back and see if this car has got 11% by the time we get back. So. I'm not really going to show you too much of the drive on the way back because it's exactly the same as the drive out here. And I'll catch up with you guys when I get just before the destination and we need to find a charger. Okay, I've just pulled over because I need to update you and we also need to look for a charging point. And well, I've got a, an app on my phone, so I don't obviously want to do that while I'm driving. So we've got 15 miles left and we've got 16% battery charge it says we're going to have 10% left when we get back which is pretty much exactly what it said when we set off let's see what we've actually got so 16% is currently saying 40 miles which is still pretty impressive however if I'm going to get home tonight I need to charge this car so you can either do find a charging point either through obviously knowing the area or you go into the sat nav search here and charging stations. Simple as that. And actually, before we left uh, Bala Lake, the car knew that I would need a charging point at some point and actually tried to take me to one along the route, which is really, really good. Or you can grab your phone. And the thing that most people use is ZapMap. 
So I'm going to click on that and it basically can show you all of the charging points across the UK. You see that? It's rather impressive to be fair, ZapMap. So what I'm going to do is find a charging point close to my destination. There we go. So this one is a genie point and it's at a Morrison's. So that's not too bad. Well, actually, <laughs> I say that, it's literally just updated saying that the 50 kilowatt charger is out of service. Two minutes ago, a user said that it was out of service. So, replan, we're not gonna to go to that one. We shall go to, let's find one here. How is this one? This one is an Ecotricity. <laughs> this one says it's out of service too. Okay, let's try another one. This is the real, real life of this. This is just me trying to find one. I've got to be completely honest with you. Yeah, the first two that I've looked at were not available. So, there's one here, which looks like an Instavolt. Uh, that one has got people on it at the minute, which is fantastic. So, okay, it looks like the one at Morrison's has now sorted itself. It doesn't now say that there's any problem with it. Okay. <laughs> Let's now go <laughs> and go to this charger, see what happens. And yeah, I will, uh, I'll catch up with you guys either when I'm about to plug this car in and I'll show you or if it's full or broken, but we'll see. There's only one way to find out and that is to get there and have a look. Well, this is not going well. The three rapid charge chargers where I live, one's broke and the other two are totally full of people who still have over an hour of charging left. I think it's important that I tell you about these things. I think if you are totally at the mercy of the public charging network, it's, it can be quite interesting. So I've currently got 10% battery left now. Now, luckily, I can now quickly plug this in at Rybrook, at one of our Rybrook sites, at one of our BMW sites. If I couldn't, uh, I'm not really sure what I would do, to be honest. Well, I'd just have to wait for whoever was in the charging bays, just have to wait an hour for them to finish their charging. But unfortunately today, I just don't have enough time to be able to sit and wait for the people to, to finish their charge. But yeah, it's quite, <laughs> it's quite interesting. You are, as I say, if, if you're at the mercy of the public charging network, at the moment, it's quite interesting to say the least. Um, but fortunately, I can go and charge this car and in all honesty, I don't have the capability to car charge this car at home. Whereas pretty much everybody that owns an electric car, you would charge it at home. You plug it in when you get back from your, your days at work and then you'd be fully charged in the morning. And in that instance, it works. Electric works very, very well. For me, I don't have that. I, I just physically cannot get a, a charging cable from my house to this car. Obviously for this small period of time that I've got this car, I'm not going to get a wall box installed, am I? So, as I say, the public charging network, I imagine in bigger cities it would be great, but where I live, three rapid chargers, all of them are either broke or totally in use. So, it's, yeah, it's rather interesting. Anyway, I'm going to plug this car in now. Thankfully, I've got access to the charger at BMW. So, I'm going to plug it in get some charging because I would not get home on the charger that I've got in this car right now. But yeah, quite interesting. That's my, <laughs> my range test. In terms of the range, this car does exactly what they say. This will do 250 miles because I've pretty much done that. 
like it, it does 250 no questions asked this car does 250 miles obviously if you were to drive it a bit harder than i have been it would drop but drive completely normal this car will do the claimed 250 miles but anyway i'm going to plug it in and well see where the next few days takes me hello and welcome to day three with the c40 now yesterday was my range test and i didn't well it didn't go too well couldn't find a fast charger this one was totally full and the other two were full or broken so i had to charge the car overnight at shoes me bmw well for a few hours is all i could have because then they had to plug their charges in anyway this morning been able to find the genie point and this one is available today so this is a 50 kilowatt charger um, to activate this all you've had to do is create an account online and then just start it so i've plugged the car in it is a ccs so it's a faster one so the bigger two two pronged uh one that sounds so bad it sounds so <laughs> not very good at this now i am actually filming a myth busting uh, video today so i'm going to go and brush up on all of my electric car stuff and information in the car while it's charging so let me actually jump around this side and i'll show you real quickly how long it's going to take uh, to charge the car so let's just fling the camera around and open this up so if i jump in here Ugh. okay so it's going to charge completely at 20 past 12 currently got 30 percent as you can see it's charging at a speed at 110 oh well around 100 miles per hour which actually is pretty good i mean you can charge this car much quicker you can get 150 kilowatt charges and maybe even 350 kilowatt charges uh, in the uk but unfortunately there's none of those anywhere near where i live so i'm going to have to deal with the 50 which actually is only showing 41 kilowatts at the minute um but anyway i'm going to brush up on all my electric car knowledge ready for my myth busting which i don't know which video is going to come first my living with this car or the myth busting but either way have a watch the link to either it'll either be in the top of the screen or it won't simple as that <laughs> um but anyway yeah i'll catch up with you guys hopefully a little bit later maybe tomorrow because i don't really want to show too much of today because all it is is me filming a myth busting with this car but i will say i'm really enjoying driving this it is incredibly comfortable the heated seats are fantastic the heated steering wheel i've never felt power like it the heated steering wheel is like a furnace which is amazing um but all in all the car drives incredibly well so anyway i'll catch up with you guys in a little bit hello and welcome back to the c40 i'm now on my way back to drop it off not a whole lot happened over the last few days it's been rainy so i've not really done any miles in it so there was no real need to film anything just went and did the weekly shop which obviously there's plenty of space in this car it's an suv i don't need to show you there's going to be space because it's obvious there is lots of space but on the drive back i just wanted to wrap up my whole experience with this car being the first time that i've experienced an ev and ran one and lived with one what's it been like well i was very apprehensive before i had this car I wasn't that much looking forward to it because I just didn't know what to expect. But I have to say, it has been quite a lot easier than I anticipated. And that 250 miles range, I think, is enough for pootling around and, and, and going about your normal daily business. Obviously, if you're a high miler, if you're doing big, long journeys on a regular basis, then this car, electric in general, could be a bit interesting. But then you just charge it anyway. So it wouldn't really matter you could use it for higher mileage however i have found and i said this earlier on in the video if you are only relying on the public charging infrastructure then it's quite interesting running an electric car because where i live there are three 50 kilowatt rapid chargers three within a 30 40 mile radius so that's not a lot however in the bigger cities closer to the bigger cities there are an awful lot more and actually it shows you on zap map that there are a lot of charging stations especially near the bigger cities so i would say charging infrastructure is good but it still needs to improve 
And if you could charge this car at home or at work, then it does make sense. I can't, I, I can't really argue with it because you sort of get into your mindset that wherever you go, you just plug it in and top it up. One of the faster chargers that's by me is by a Tesco. So I had to go in and get some, get some shopping. So you just automatically plug the car in and charge it. Yeah, I only got about 10, 15, 20 miles extra, but it's still 10-ish miles more. And it's not done anything to sort of inconvenience me. It's not been put out of my day. It's just as going around normal, normal business. So if there are public chargers at pretty much every single supermarket and service station, etc., etc., then it makes a lot of sense. But what about the car? The C40, I've been massively impressed with this. I've really enjoyed this car. It drives really, really well and well, listen, it's so quiet being an electric car. The regen brakes are fantastic. You really do find yourself driving it one pedal, slowing down now and I haven't even touched the brake. I've barely even touched the friction brake the whole time I've had this. Everything's great. The sound system in here is amazing. The satellite navigation, which is Google powered, is great. It's just a very, very good, capable car, this. And I have actually really enjoyed driving it around for the last seven days. I think the car itself is fantastic. And it's not been as bad as I would have expected. So electric, yeah, it kind of it kind of does make sense for the here and now. Um, and I think it is an actual viable option for mobility. So, I mean, what more is there to say? I think, yeah, it does, it does work. It does work. But you have to make it work. That's the thing. You have to make it work. And if you're willing to make it work, then yes, electric does make sense. Now, thank you guys ever so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for plenty more content to come. If you want to see more of these more relaxed, vloggy kind of style videos, please let us know in the comments below. And well, it couldn't be more different because next week I'm handing this car back today. And next week I'm picking up a fire breathing supercar. I'm going to say what it is, but please subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss the videos with that car. I'll see, you. what was that? <laughs> I don't know what that was. Anyway. I'll see you guys again really, really soon.